Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in and joining us on the program, The Buzz, your social media program on television. It's a lovely Tuesday afternoon, a cold one, but I like the weather. Welcome to the show. My name is Patience Beloka. For today is Tuesday, the 25th of June, 2019. And of course, you're watching Galaxy Television. We're beaming live from our studios here in Ikeja, Lagos. Today, once again, we'll be looking at stories trending on social media as we usually do. And joining me at the table this afternoon is a pleasure to have come back. Great Imo Jonathan. He is a media consultant, a human and business uh, uh, development uh, consultant. Also, he's a social and political analyst. Welcome. Thank great. You. Always good to have you here. My pleasure to be here. Also at the table, my friend, my senior colleague, Chuk Sunwane of the Guardian Newspapers and also a media and social analyst. Good afternoon, Chuk. Good afternoon, Patience. Great to Thank have you, you here Thank again. You. All right, welcome viewers to the show. 0802 <coughs> is the number we'll be using today. And of course, today we'll be looking at uh, the following topics. JAM calls for embargo on establishment of new varsities and Governor Ganduje of Kano jails musician for joking about him in a song. Also, uh, if time permits, we'll be looking at the presidential order on Papa Pot. That topic has found mm. a way to just elude us on this program for more than a week now, but I hope we have the time to get to it. Anyways, welcome to the show. As is tradition, we'll start with trending news. And the first story says CBN gives banks three months to withdraw mutilated notes. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has opened a three-month window from June the 3rd to September 2nd for customers across the country to replace their mutilated Naira notes with new ones across all banks. The new order is as a result of its resolve to finally replace mutilated old Naira notes in Nigeria after the failure of banks to heed previous directives. Director, Corporate Communications, CBN, Isaac Okorafo, said CBN has set up departments to listen to customers' uh, customers complaints if banks refuse to heed the order, adding that the move became imperative due to infractions noticed from some banks in the way new notes are being handled. He also said CBN has been replacing lower denominations across the country by going through the local markets and transport unions instead of the banks because of the approach of some banks to the issue. All right, gentlemen, quickly. Start with you, great. Mm, very unfortunate that uh, the CBN has to get here mm -hmm. before our banks will listen. Mm. They appear not to understand their responsibility and role in societal development and also what i fear is that even as the withdrawal is going on a lot of fraud will be involved we have mm -hmm. had cases where when the notes are withdrawn mm -hmm. uh, it's assumed to they want to destroy them they want to bond them so a set of people will come and then still find a way to get some of them back into the system and that becomes a kind of way of making money for themselves. Mm -hmm. But also what is, 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 uh, is an indictment on the part of Nigerian bankers for the central bank to go to the extent of liaison with the uh, road <coughs> transport workers yeah. and all of those segments of people. Mm -hmm. So that is a very, very big embarrassment for the banking sector in Nigeria. Mm. It means they are, they bank, the central bank does not have confidence in their ability to handle this. And most of them do them as business. Even when they are given new Naira notes, you see you know, branch managers of banks who get involved with all these uh, currency dealers and mm -hmm. uh, people who attend locations to, to deal on currencies. Mm. You know? So that's unfortunate. And also the way we handle Naira notes uh, is really, really not uh, fine. We, we, we shows uh, is a manifest of how indisciplined we are. And if you go to other countries, Ghana and others, you see people handle notes better. Yeah. And their currencies, their money lasts in their hand often better. Mm. But here in Nigeria, we're always trying to change our notes because everybody, most of us handle Naira notes poorly. Poorly. Okay. All right, Chooks, isn't it mm. an anomaly, you know, that the banks uh, didn't comply with the directives of the of the CBN before now? You know, it's just it's just very very unfortunate that um, you know some I, I I used to tell people I don't think we have banks in Nigeria really. 
Mm -hmm. If you want to look at it, really, do we have banks? It's banking is not, it's not about taking deposit and uh, mm. and uh, paying people via counter. There are so many things you're supposed to do as a bank. There's so many things. Bank is beyond collecting money. But if you look at Nigerian banks, the only thing you have with them is you're depositing money or you're <laughs> taking money. Fine. In most cases, oh, I go and take it through ATM. We can't pay you here. You know, it's just... But as a bank, Shebe, you are supposed to be part of the people protecting mm -hmm. Naira. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to... This, you are the one, mm -hmm. this Naira, you are the one that handles it. You should be part of educating the people. And if, if they notice, but we try it. We draw the notes because it, it's your thing. You, yeah, it's, you it, it's your main trade. Yeah, I don't know why they find it difficult to do that, but still, these same bankers find so a way to sell the same clean notes to some yeah. women somewhere in Yaba, somewhere in Maltu, <laughs> and then when you <laughs> go to <laughs> bank and make yeah. a request of clean notes, they tell you we don't <laughs> have. If I so bad now that ATM pays even bad yeah, currency. <laughs> I mean, it's a saucer. All right, so we have till the 2nd of September. We hope to have uh, better looking Naira notes in circulation. But before, before we, sorry, before we put out these Naira notes, and, you know, we've said it on this show. Maybe one day you need to bring the National Orientation Agency people. <laughs> because what is that they are they doing? I remember those days we used to have campaigns on how, you know, different issues, different, they are, they are, they are, different they are, they are sharing so recurrent things. expenditure you know, every year. So I don't know what exactly is their job. They should, they should also form a campaign eh? on all these things. Let I people don't know. know. <laughs> Last time we, we had We've about not had any serious, serious campaign from NOA. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, moving on. Federal government warns Ghana, Togo, to stop attacking Nigerians. Mm. The federal government has issued a warning to Ghana and Togo to stop attacking Nigerians in their countries. The chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Erewa, said the warning became necessary following the recent attacks on Nigerians residing in those countries. Mrs. Arewa called on the foreign countries to protect Nigerians the same way the lives of their nationals are being safeguarded in Nigeria. She also said, and I quote, if a Nigerian commits a crime, let him pay the penalty for it as a punishment. But you cannot penalize a nation and its citizens. So we will be engaging more with the diaspora. Subsequently, we're going to have hotlines for Nigerians in the diaspora so that they can contact the commission and we can look into whatever challenges they are facing. End of quote. A good one. A good one. Uh, Honorable Abike must be commended for you know issuing this statement. I think after this incident that happened in the Nigerian High Commission in London, yes, I wrote yeah. about it mm -hmm. and I actually commended her spirit because I knew that at the time when we were having this report about people being enslaved in, in Libya, mm -hmm. she did a very good job at trying to connect with Nigerians over there and ensuring that most of them are brought back, back you know, to, to safety. Yeah. And also, uh, when this commission was established and she was appointed, based on her experience as a chairman, uh, House Committee on Diaspora, and mm -hmm. all of this she has done under the Foreign Affairs, I was too sure because she's a passionate person. That was what was key. People or someone who is passionate about Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And I want to assure you that uh, this is the right way and this is the best way because now, also what is important from the incident that happened in the High Commission, found that one of the biggest problems has been that the Nigerian officials themselves belittle Nigerians. Mm. You know, you make them of no value even before citizens of all other countries. countries yeah. When they have issues, nobody responds, nobody takes care of them. Mm. And most of our foreign uh, this, uh, missions have become just a place, an outpost for making money. You know, we had a case in Canada, the one that was reported on social media, mm -hmm. where people were given a day to come for some documentation, mm -hmm. and you get there, the commission, the embassy is closed without any prior information. All of these things are not good. They are, they, they are damaging to our reputation as Nigerians, and this is one of the things that give impetus mm -hmm. to foreign nationals. Nigerians are not the only ones that commit crime anywhere in the world. And as stated, if anybody has committed a crime, Anywhere in the world, black person should be liable according to the law of that nation. So the idea of generalizing punishment is unacceptable. And I think also beyond issuing such statements, Nigerians in this country should begin to be brought together, 
beyond government officials at the high commission and embassies, then the Nigerian community should work together to ensure that government officials are notified when these incidents are right okay. and where they too can take care of things they should be able to take care of it before the arrival of government okay. officials. that is important all right and at the high, highest level nigerian government must learn to speak for its citizens because those are the people you govern mm. there's no nigeria that is nigeria mm. every citizen anywhere in the world represent nigeria nigeria is not an empty space it is the people that makes nigeria that makes so you must okay. respect okay. that true all right chicks yeah. You know, uh, so that we don't begin to repeat ourselves. Mm. Everything he said there is, is in order. Uh, but I would like to add, when you leave your country to go and stay in another man's country, you must, the word is must, abide by the rules and regulations mm -hmm. of those countries where you live. Sure. I've seen cases of a lot of Nigerians trying to live like Nigerians in another country. It's not possible. These are different climates, different cultures, different, different set environments. Of rules. Different set of rules. So when you now try to say, ah, because I'm a Nigerian, no, no, you have crossed a border. Mm -hmm. Nigerian rules no longer apply. They serve international uh, Something has to do with international uh, laws and all that. But when you are in somebody's country, you need to first of all understand what are the do's and don'ts. I think that's basically where the problem is. I've, I've seen this in a lot of countries where Nigerians live in another country as if they are still yes. in Nigeria. Nigeria. So I think we also f f we need to find a way to educate our people mm -hmm. so that. Uh, as much as we want government to also come for our people and then you know be ask questions about their welfare mm -hmm. we also have to make efforts to ensure that we don't fall short of the laws because um if if I, I, one of the problems is that okay here in nigeria do we really care what the Ghanaians do do we care what the togolese do do we care what the Lebanese do? We don't really care. But mm. every other person, it's yeah. not like you. People care about what you do in their own country. Sure. Because here, we had cases of all factories where you have all kinds of Lebanese maltreating Nigerians, Nigerians. here. And then even nobody, right on even Nigerian right soil. Here, nobody cares. Yeah. But, so we have to understand that uh, it's a different ball game in some of these countries. And then why is it so? Because they are not as big as we are. Mm. They are very small. Ghana is about 20 plus. That's like size of Lagos, mm -hmm. and so any little thing you do shows. Of course, it's not like in Nigeria where I have two hundred million. Who has time for all those people? Mm -hmm. So we need to also educate our people like this. They should well, understand how to conduct that. Themselves. Yeah, you need to conduct yourself mm -hmm. so that when yeah. things like this happen, it makes things easier yeah. for government. For the government to tackle. To tackle. It, so. Okay. Well said. You can imagine when you are taking up a case of somebody eventually found as an illegal illegal immigrant. Mm. So what happens? I get mm. that. All right, that's it on trending news. 0802-836-8971 is still the number to use. We'll go to our major stories of the day. The first one, Jam calls for embargo on establishment of new varsities. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has called for an embargo on the establishment of new public and private universities in the country. The Registrar of the Board, Ishak Oloide, said emphasis should rather be placed on developing the 170 universities already in the country. According to the National Universities Commission, Nigeria has 43 federal universities, 48 state universities, and 79 private universities. Universities should not be established just to boost the ego of rich individuals and politicians. Uh, the registrar advocated increased funding of education in the country by committing nothing less than 15% of the national budget to uh, the sector. <clears throat> All right, uh, gentlemen, let's talk about uh, this issue of laying embargo on uh, new universities, be they public or private. As it were, do we not have enough universities in the country already? Why are we talking about establishing uh, new universities in the first place when we already know we have a deficit in terms of standards of uh, the kind of uh, education being given and also uh, the type of uh, people you know who are graduates coming out of these universities in the first place well i think you've said it all <laughs> i don't th i don't think the problem is uh, we don't have a problem with having more universities we have a problem with maintaining standard mm. but let me also take this opportunity to appreciate uh, professor lloyd he's mm -hmm. been one outstanding nigerian this Buaris era mm. honestly 
I wish Mr. President could consider him for as Minister for Education. Okay. Yes, the man has shown capacity in all his ramifications, mm -hmm. straightforward, looking for solution part time mm -hmm. regarding the aspects uh, responsibility he has been given. As Jam Registrar, he has done excellently well, and mm -hmm. everybody can should commend him for that. Okay. Then going forward, what you, what I think the challenge here is not the number of universities, the quality of education. Mm -hmm. We are a nation that have not considered education as the bedrock of our development, of, of development. Anywhere in the world, any nation that has a future must consider it, its education as priority. And Very we have true. not done that. Right now, mm. we even the other time we are discussing our Marjorie and all of that. Yes, in, in a structured society. There is, you can have systemic and non systemic education mm -hmm. rather than allow more people establish universities and polytechnic that are not up to par with the standard all over the world. Mm -hmm. You can people can also invest in technical education, okay. vocational training. Okay, and the problem is that everybody places emphasis on paper, so we have everybody wanting to go to university. And when they graduate, some of them don't have content. Mm. So what you have is paper. You just want so, that paper. But the yeah. purpose is not for you to acquire paper. It's for you to acquire knowledge. It's for you. Uh, the word education is taken from the Latin word educo, which means self-development, mm. which is to help the individual try in his area of purpose, of calling, mm. of unique knowledge where you have interest. So we should be able to consider, you know, having vocational technical colleges and as part of our education systemic and non systemic education must all be com you know compacted into one so that and we should have a marshall plan what kind of university do we want to have if i have a friend as minister for education and someone who's close to the president i could get uh, this uh, a license to own a university that's all that is going on and when people are even giving these licenses there are no follow-ups mm. we must have a follow-up to know why the, the standards we have set, are you meeting the standard? If you are not meeting the standard, then we should maybe consider revoking them. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should, for now, be running your, uh, your whatever as an institution or institute or a vocational training center until you have gained the capacity to be called a university. I think that should be considered. And, but I don't have problem actually with the number actually. Because we are still we're, we're a nation that is growing at the average rate of 3.8% per annum. Mm -hmm. At the level we are now, with the number of persons we have, and with the number of those who are denied admission every year, considering the fact that we are now paper crazy, so you should know that there are more people who want to go to university. But the problem has been that the standard or the quality of education that mm -hmm. we are getting, that is the problem. So if these universities, the ones on ground, can actually be pushed, to get to the basic better standard that we want, then I don't think we have problems okay. with the number. All right, Chooks, uh, let me bring this in. Uh, mm. In April, it was reported uh, by the Executive Secretary of the uh, National Universities Commission uh, that the Commission was processing about 303 new applications for the establishment of uh, private universities. Also in April, the JAM Registrar you know, mm. accused private universities of aiding academic corruption in the country. All right, now let's take the number of people who still want to create in, uh, private universities, 303, and juxtapose that with, you know, the universities we already have and the menace, so to say, they are already creating within uh, the educational sector. Mm. How do we move forward from here? And how do we justify the fact that we really need more universities when the ones we have on ground are not really doing anything you know what is you know this 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 question is one question that has so many angles to it but let me try to offer some answers to them if you make me president of nigeria today one of the things i will do is to ensure that education is not a money-making venture mm -hmm. and also ensure that health is not a money-making venture mm -hmm. this is the problem with nigeria let us go back to you know it started with nursery school we used to have government nursery school then primary individuals started doing nursery school mm -hmm. and the graduate we killed government nursery school then we entered primary school in we merely individuals started owning primary school we killed public primary school 
The same thing we did with secondary school. Immediately you have private people establishing secondary school, we killed the secondary we are, It's just moving now to the university to the level. It happened to polytechnics, we have all kinds of private polytechnics, they will kill that one. That's why, that's exactly what you are seeing. Mm. Because people have seen this, it's, it's, look, it's about money. Mm. It's about money, but that, sh that shouldn't be the idea of having a university. And I always ask people, why do you want to go to school? Education is to solve a problem. When you spend four years <laughs> reading political science and then end up working in the bank, it's wasted four years. Wasted. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have in this system. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why you have the Togolese and the uh, yeah, Benoas yeah. are here because, mm -hmm. you know, their own educational system is a bit structured. It's more technical. Yeah, technical. They, 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 yeah. they know they are, they are third world countries, so they need more technical people than your mm -hmm. PhDs and all that. So mm -hmm. they focus on, you know, you could study tiling as a course, carpentry as a course, and you have you are certified. Mm -hmm. You could study uh, all kinds of POP. They welding do this, and all welding that. And yeah. that. Exactly. So that's why when you see, when they come here, they, they, you see their impact. What yeah. they learned is being put to test. Here, we have universities that, <laughs> I don't know, you don't know how many research they do in a year. I don't know any findings that any universities are doing. So. It's, it's, it's all about people trying to make money, and mm. then you can't, you can't develop that way. You and can't, you can't, it's not possible. Then, like you were saying, here we have professors who don't have patents. That's what we're saying. Professors without uh, invention. invention. Mm -hmm. So, Nothing. you so wonder why, why, why do you go to school? Um, exactly. Really, we, because we need, to, we need to reduce this thing to the layman's point of view. Exactly. If I'm spending two years here, to learn how to make this cup. It makes no sense I go up and start learning how to sell paper. When I've spent time and learning the yeah, and then the universities part, too, yeah. I think we should also review exactly. our curriculum because and we need to check what are the challenges of Nigeria. Exactly. We need to encourage people that, to study those that, courses that will deal with our exactly, immediate challenges. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So this is about solving problems. Okay. Our, our curriculum does not reflect our need. Hmm. You know, there was an article I wrote Solving the correlation between youth unemployment mm. and uh, you know youth, un youth unemployment in Nigeria, and at the critical end, the issue that even where there are jobs, our people are not qualified mm -mm. to have them. Mm -mm. That is why today you still see the Japanese, the Chinese, Indians. They are the ones producing the little little things we need. When we want to build our roads, we give them to a rap contractor, Jesus Bega. And yet, everything you graduate. People who have people mm -hmm. engineering, Civil qualification, engineering, mechanical engineers, yeah, and all. And yeah. you, you wonder why they go to school to acquire those certificates because mm -hmm. they can't solve those problems. We have a, a country must identify its own areas of need. I'm telling you, education to meet those needs because truly, education is about solving problems. Mm -hmm. If you have knowledge that doesn't solve problems, it's useless. It's useless. Why it's should useless. you go and study marketing when you should have joined my brother in Alaba International for the next four years? In fact, you do better. Now we have graduates, people with BSc masters going to Alaba, Trefer, to join other Igbo brothers who have been in the system maybe 10 years, who know better, who are importers, who even know how to do uh, clear Who understand the economics, the, the dynamics of the yeah. market. Mm. So mm. we need to put our, this is our money where our mouth is. Mm -hmm. We need to know what is the needs, what are the needs of Nigeria, like Chinese is doing. Their curriculum reflects their needs. You can't go to Chinese school to study in science. No, no, you, you know, it's, 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 it's just the irony of this country called Sorry. Nigeria. You know, you are, you are, you are a developing nation. Let's, let's, let's claim to be a developing nation. What it means is that you need more technical people. There are so many things to build. Mm -hmm. yeah. But here, we are tilting towards university degree that does not solve the problems. Mm. You know, I, I, I was sharing with somebody two days ago and I said there's a new research that shows them, you know, they were doing research on young people. And um, I tried to remember the name of that organization. It's, a, it's an international organization. So they came up with the top three, you know, interests for young people. Top mm. three. <laughs> Number one is music. Mm. Mm. Number two is movies. Mm. Number three is food. Mm. Food, <laughs> not sports, food. So, and then what happens is that this is how the investors study 
mm. the demography to, to see okay what do i invest in okay. so don't be surprised when you see the some banks we don't call names here mm -hmm. some banks are not setting up music platforms yeah and then I, I having something like iTunes yeah. to sell music. Yeah, exactly. Some banks are funding filmmaking. Mm. Some banks are going to food festivals. Exactly. Mm. Some banks so they, they they follow this is where this is the interest. And very soon we'll soon have betting festivals. Yeah, so, so you see this this is this is these are the things. So you know you you have an university system that does not understand, understand that. that this is okay. how things are changing and then we have international organizations saying we don't need your degrees we need your skills exactly. and then we, we need to begin to that, teach our people true. skills because you see your, your google you see your yahoo they are saying no what can you do not we don't exactly. care about your if i was i was in alan Dick, our md was a 36 years old Briton who never went to university but he went to technical college and he was able to do far more than me a master's degree holders. In fact, we had people with master's degree and all of that working under him mm. at that time. So he was solving problems. Alan Dick was the first official construction company to one of the telecoms companies in Nigeria. And I learned a lot. I also went to G4S, Group 4 Security. My little thing there, I even had um, an issue with a watch repairer from South Africa, mm -hmm. South African wife turned expatriate here, mm. a common watch repair in South Africa. Mm. He was brought in here as an expatriate. And it was unfortunate we had so many master degree holders also in the company who were answering him, who were answerable to him. And uh, I mean, he was too rude to an elderly person in the office to extend that one. I had to challenge him and he didn't <laughs> know how much I knew about him. Mm. I was like, come on, you're a watch repair. But the, the important thing is that even had been a watch repair, he was good at mm. solving problems. So this, yeah, that's the problem. Okay, you know, we, we cannot uh, totally talk about this issue without looking at funding. Mm. You know, for the tertiary, for education sector. Let mm. me put it that that way. Uh, funding, according to our budget, you know, is is nothing to write home about. Mm. So, how do we even begin to put things right in the education sector, even when the federal government does not see it as priority in terms of you know channeling more funds in that direction i know that a lot of universities enjoy funding from private individuals mm. who genuinely want to support education mm -hmm. the ones who want to make money out of education want to set up university by themselves the ones who genuinely want to support education built like you go to some law faculties built by a particular individual, individual. and donated to the school. Yeah. Yeah. Some built by corporate organization and donated to the schools. Mm. So, you know, this funding thing, if there are those people who are, in the, you are, you are eager to have university, you can go to an existing university and support something if you really want to support education. Mm. Just, uh, government cannot, I say it, government alone cannot. And also, what I have said about universities is that you need to block a lot of leakages in the university system there's so much corruption there so much corruption if i open my mouth to say what i know about one of the in quote best universities in nigeria maybe maybe those people sitting there will be showing the way out mm. everything has been commercialized okay you are commercializing this thing at the end of the day we don't exactly. find this money in the institution the coffers mm. they go to private people mm. Go to those places, you see all kinds of businesses. Where is the money going? Students pay for some hostel fee of thousands. We don't, at the end of the government, still give you money. Mm. So, what do you do with the, mon the money you generate internally? So, this is the problem. When we, that's, it's, it's, it's beyond calling government to put in money in the mm. system. I think the government should check that system. And block the loopholes. Okay. Until you block the loopholes, you'll be throwing in the money. money you and then it will not reflect. That, that okay. is the truth. But that also should not stop us from doing what we should do. Because mm. right now, Ghana, countries like Ghana, Rwanda, they are they their budgets are not budget, they give up as much as twenty to twenty five percent mm -hmm. annually to their to their education. Mm -hmm. And we can begin to see the results in terms of the, the quality of persons that the country is producing. So, dealing with what Chuck actually uh, mentioned is key. The corruption in the institutions of government and even private sector institutions also have some form of corruption. Mm -hmm. But I think it's worse within government institutions. So, that also tells me that those who are supposed to be handling education are also lagging behind in the sense that 
they're not looking into the system. We, there was a friend who wrote about you know this the rate of suicide in one of the universities. Mm -hmm. I mean something that happened all within a period of one month, mm -hmm. and they, then there are images that came from the school that showed the deplorable state of the hostels where the students live. It is is a university of repute in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and you have such hostels, and government is giving subventions every year. So as much as what you suggested is good, you need individuals who can support, but for you to have a sustainable education formula, government must take the lead. We must prioritize our future. How, why should you be having less than 500 people in the National Assembly every year, uh, you will spend 150 billion on less than 500 people, mm -hmm. adults, who benefited from free education in Nigeria, who most of them have worked either as police officers, military officers, civil servants and everything and now they graduated to governors and they ended up in the National Assembly. You are still spending such an amount of money hmm. when 13 point something million kids are out of school. It is a matter of what the nation prioritizes. And then every year you have recurrent expenditure of 75% for only less than 5 million Nigerians who are called civil servants in a country where there are 200 million people. Hmm. From presidency to the governors to the local government with with tend to miss the priority as a nation it is it is this happening because education is the bedrock of any societal development so we should <coughs> make a priority by putting our money there investing heavily there why should a civil servant a level 15 maybe 14 person be driving a car of 20 15 million <laughs> and he lives somewhere five minutes away to the federal yeah, uh, secretary yeah. where you you can't pay lecturers well, and when you can't fund the school learning environment, you can't fund researchers and all of those things. So you're not you're not prioritizing. Mm. Your priorities are wrong if, if you're going to have one. So we're a nation, we're dysfunctional. That is just the word. Mm. In many first, like we were talking about when you were introducing the topic, we we're talking about our papa. Our papa was supposed to take about 30,000 metric tons, but now it's doing about 80 to 120. Big, and yet there are other ports in Nigeria that are abandoned with simply dysfunctional people. And that is, nobody <laughs> can be blamed for that. Mm. And this is where I keep saying to people that you occupy a position of authority does not make you a leader. A leader is a pathfinder. People who should be, you know, creating the path for society to move on. So you occupy position as local government chairman, governor, minister, president, minister, uh, senator, house of rep member. And you are not part of the solution. You are the problem. You are just occupying a space. I don't regard you as a leader. How can we not have solution to all of this? And we keep repeating this narrative year after year, year after year, week after week. Sometimes okay. even you hear those in government talking as if. There is somebody somewhere who should be solving the problem. <laughs> they will give us answers. You know, we should, uh, uh, we should all, you know, we should be able to solve this thing. Nigeria, and you'll be asking yourself, but this is the person who is actually meant to be solving this problem. <laughs> who not give you no okay, Who will not solve the problem? We can ask that. I think if I let you go on, we won't leave here today. Oh, you no. know, forget the laughter. This is very, a very serious issue. Oh, you know, we're talking yeah, about the future of Nigeria in terms of, you know, the kind of of people you're churning out from these universities year in year out well according to ishak lady the jam registrar uh he says private university operators are going against the laws guiding university operations in nigeria and i think that is something uh the education minister and those in authority in the right places you know should do something about we cannot yes, keep yeah, cool. Doing you this know, we every like to time, sound, uh, politically yeah. correct. Mm. The education minister we have mm. under this last four years of Buhari mm. administration is poor. Okay, so this not even joke about on that note. Angry now. Let's so, move on to the next main topic of today. Mm. Governor Ganduje of Kano State jails musician for joking about him in a song last week. A Kano based musician by name Mohammed Yusuf, aka AGY or Agi, I don't know what the right pronunciation for that is. Anyways, he was jailed for two years for defaming the character of Governor Abdullah Ganduje of Kano State in a song that he released. The hit song mocked the governor's alleged dollar bribe, the creation of the new Kano Emirate, and of course, election rigging. He sang in the song, I quote, mm. Kano governor has already turned blind. I swear what you did is hurting us. For locker, governor is more than a thief. 
for locker governor can sell out gogo for those who don't know gogo is governor ganduji's wife okay <laughs> anyways after the song went viral uh the musician was picked up by officers of the law on monday last week and the musician was found guilty by the court of three count charges of releasing a music single without the due approval of the Kano state censorship board releasing a music video without obtaining the same approval and defamation of character of the incumbent governor of the state now on both counts one and two the singer was sentenced to six months each with an option of fifty thousand naira fine while on count three the musician bagged one year without option of fine now a lot of nigerian artists have risen up to this and they are reacting and of course uh, threatening fire brimstone top on the list is nigerian singer and lawyer files and he has condemned the punishment on muhammad yusuf and said it's shameful to see public officers using the machinery of the state to harass citizens and attempting to hinder our inalienable freedom of expression i'll just end it here all right, let's hear your opinion on this. I'm sure you've seen this in the in the news. <coughs> I, I, I came across it okay. on social media. I've not mm -hmm. taken any interest, okay. but uh, what I think um, uh, we, as much as we want to encourage uh, criticisms mm -hmm. of government mm -hmm. officials, uh, we should also be intelligent about doing it. Okay. I, I thought it should have come satirical in trying to do this mm -hmm. rather than just being so uh, literal. Yeah. Literal. So he was so literal. And whether you like it or not, as Chief mentioned the other time, there are laws. Even in Nigeria, as lawless as it seems, mm -hmm. we have a law. Mm -hmm. That is character deformation. Mm -hmm. You can be charged, you can be sued, you can be sentenced for doing that. Mm -hmm. If you are straightforward as saying that. Because as of today, yes, there was allegation of uh, bribery of, uh, of, of a kind. But no courts in the, in the, of the law. They have, are allegations. No, yes, no court ever have actually sentenced the governor. If he had, uh, there is an absolute sentence, you mm. can actually make a literal statement regarding that. But for now, I think uh, also being an artist means you should be creative. Mm. So you should involve your creativity in trying to, you understand me, uh, pursue your social uh, criticism in trying to help society move forward. I don't think we should dissuade, you know, musicians because musicians are instrument. They have been instrumental to social reforms sure. and all of that in the times past. And even at the time, we started asking if our own artists, um, visual and all of those artists, we are actually really taking keen interest about what was happening in Nigeria. I realized, uh, like the man you just mentioned, the artist Files, Files. he mm -hmm. came up with a satirical mm -hmm. product that mm -hmm. actually was banned eventually. Mm -hmm. But actually, he, the message was put out there. Mm -hmm. And those who banned it already got the message. Because everything was not fine. So he found a creative way to send that message across. Even if you ban it, maybe you stop it from going very far. The, the unfortunate thing is that it created more attention mm -hmm. for the product. Mm -hmm. So I guess being an artist, you need to be creative. Okay. So you don't get into trouble. That okay. Is and even if you get into trouble, mm -hmm. let it be something that uh, when you are not wrong for the law, that they can handle okay, that. Okay, well said. Yeah. All right, Chooks, let's hear your, your take on this. <coughs> you know, we're in the era of social media, so everything goes. And then, but that's the danger. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Social media has given everybody voice. Yeah. So people now don't understand that where your right stops is where another person's right mm. starts. Yeah. And um, you know, like the way they report, the headline says uh, Ganduji jails. I really did not the court jails. <laughs> 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 we need to put these things in perspective. <laughs> Ganduji cannot jail the musician. Yeah. It is a court that but jails the musician. Mm. Ganduji can, if you, the thing is, if you disagree with me on anything, you take me to court. And uh, we'll go to look at the existing laws. And the law will say, oh, you are guilty. Mm. I think the law found the guy He's guilty. guilty. OK. So but the, the point I wanted to make also is like what you're talking about, creativity. If you're listening to Two Faces, DBS, uh, for instance, there's a song called For Instance. Mm. You, you take time and listen to that song. Mm. He said the whole a lot. lot. Yeah. But you need to be creative to understand mm -hmm. what he's saying. Exactly. And I'm sure those who was talking to already knew he was talking exactly. to them. But you need to be very creative. Uh, somebody like M.I. did um, a whole lot of controversial songs 
that you need to listen to it well to know what it's talking about. This was like too direct. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, it shows, it's, uh, you know, sometimes we, we, we hide uh, other creativity and then we're carrying out some political, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. assignments. Assaults, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, well, it could but have been. Also, our leaders could, also should could have been. The, it could have been. Very, no, but the thing, no, 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 no. The thing is this. Mm -hmm. It is it just like when the issue of FRC and new plate number came up. Mm. It was like, oh, everybody must change to the new place number. And so one citizen said, it's not true. I take you to court. You don't mm -hmm. have the right mm -hmm. to ask me to and change won the, case. the place number you, you mm -hmm. allocated to mm -hmm. me and I paid. Mm -hmm. If you really want to change, you come and take the old one. And give me a new one. one. Mm -hmm. And then the court said, yeah, he, mm -hmm. he's right. So sometimes you don't take it for granted that people say things mm. until you say it to somebody who wants to press but charges. Exactly. And you see that there are laws. Exactly. Okay, a lot of there should be. All right, a lot quickly, of let me bring out two issues, you know, that has become like topic of debate from this particular story. Mm. One is the fact that a lot of Nigerian artists feel this was an unjust sentence. Second of all, uh, the way you know justice was expedited in this particular case as against what you have in you know in our usual court of law where it could drag mm. for a while which is why they are thinking um the governor might have used his power as a go as a governor you know to have even if that's the case okay. you know that's why i have that's why i keep saying i have problem with the way social media is being used in nigeria mm. you know it makes people lazy people can sit down and say all sorts of things if you disagree with the judgment, mm. you appeal. You appeal. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then when you appeal, the social media supporters should go to that court and join themselves in that charge. If the guy belongs to P-Man or London Music Association, you should join yourself to it. And then bring all your whatever, all the, pull all the strings you have. Mm. And then you push the case. But the thing is that we sit there in the comfort of our zone and we're telling a poor boy that might be cooling off somewhere now that, you know, <laughs> see, that's, not, that's not my idea of activism. Yeah. When we used to do activism, we really get involved. I remember there was a time we, we started in Enugu. We did not do it. We just sat on the road and blocked the whole highway. We did not touch anybody. So just sat down the road. So you see, if you really think there's something wrong with that court, join yourself to that case. Mm. Go there, find a way to make sure the right thing is done. It is not by tweeting and doing all this one. It's a court. Yes, mm. It wasn't a uh, government did not sit down in the government house and pass the judge. Yes, I also think the second part you mentioned is it might be critical. Mm. Yes, it does not as a right the fact that the individual has offended the law. Mm -hmm. there, but we found out that uh, justice in Nigeria is actually becoming susceptible to political influence and cash and carry mm. we know whereby the when we have issues that should be dispensed with quickly we don't get them to be dispensed with. Mm -hmm. we have so many formal until and unless who are, who are know, 12 years someone, out of mm -hmm. government judges in nigeria have not been courageous enough to sentence them mm. so i see sometimes it uh, proves how coward the, the, <laughs> some, the, the, some of our judges are they can't look at government officials in, in the face. <laughs> they, it's, no, it's, 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 a, it's a call for review of how these uh, segments of government you know, treat themselves. Sometimes the judiciary asks, I think they are the appendage of the executive. Mm. You understand? I do. But they are supposed to be standing up for what to balance the governance in Nigeria. Where members of the executive files the law, sometimes in many cases, whether at the local government, state, and federal level, they find it difficult to act. So sometimes, it's like you go to many causes, when EFCC tells you they have convicted thousands of people, and you think they are very people that you should be, things you should rejoice have, you get to discover it's one boy in first act who was sending one woman a for maybe $100. So all these convictions, convictions that he is getting that the judges are trying to use to prove that they are doing something, all from Yahoo boys, but the people whose corruption inspires fundamentally all that kind of corruption, you have not found the courage to judge them. Some governors have left government, some have left government for 12 years now, and their cases are still in court. And if, if they are not corrupt. Why don't you set them free? So why are they lacking courage to do the reason? So you have 
John the young man that's good, maybe he has committed an offense. But the speed at which you dispense that has become suspect mm -hmm. because we have not seen you dispense judgment in all that case. Kind of no, 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 let's not get emotional. About I'm it. not emotional. No, no, I understand I'm what, what I'm saying. That. The point I'm making is. Are you doubting me that no, no, the Nigerian no. courts, <laughs> prominent characters, don't go to jail? Listen, judges are What, I'm, what, I'm, to what I'm saying them. is that. You know, when people run to court, yes. I always caution them. I mm. say, the court is not entirely where you hear the truth or where you get, that is it. get justice. Mm. You need to understand how the court works. A that. judge can decide to open a case today and close it. Yeah. He can decide the same case to stretch for two years. It depends. So it's about where is interest. That so that depends, was the point it was, depends was, was on what, really. <laughs> so the, the interest. The justice system the is interest. in Nigeria. So it's made in a way that the politicians and those who have the connection can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. exactly. Some people go to court to buy time. Mm -hmm. If you are supposed to kill me, I go, and go to court and put it in court. We'll be buying time. Mm -hmm. When go, go to the back and do out of court settlement mm -hmm. and then we'll regain freedom. Yes, it's, exactly. it's, so you, you have to understand how the legal system here works. We are some... Because some of the judges belong to one political party. Okay, because our time is fast running. But I need to quickly read this message. Uh, it's coming from Ke Kevin in Joss. And he says, a U.S. rapper known as Joyner Lucas recently released a song called Devil's Walk, mm. in which he openly and brutally called on God to bring back good people who have died, such as Aliyah, Tupac, etc., and take away bad people instead. Among the bad people he mentioned, of course, is Mr. Trump, the US president himself. Yet, no law came after him. The truth is, Nigerian government is often in the habit of subjugating its citizens with state instrument. Nigerian politicians are intolerant. Nigerians are reading so okay. many things on this. Is on on this. Okay, this is so 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 this, eh? <laughs> that is why we should be careful because we are dealing with different, different sense laws. Of, they don't have sense of humor different sense and of they are very sets. quick you know, exactly. not, because they have so many things to say. <laughs> 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 Alright, it's been a very engaging and interesting <laughs> afternoon. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Great Emo Jonathan. Thank mm. you for coming. Thank you, Chooks Wane. Thank you for coming. And thank you, viewers, for your time. We'll be back Back tomorrow, God willing. Same time on this station. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.